already feel the temperature starting to drop. Uh, we're getting that northwest wind. It's supposed to get down into the lower digits for the next three days. Getting everything ready for this cold, cold air that we're us Okies aren't used to. So. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. We're at the Ponderosa. First thing, this is uh, just some daily chores that we do. So this is kind of how we uh, essentially train our weaning calves uh, to get used to people. This is kind of the way I do it. And so this is how my mornings typically start and I take care of all the animals, all the critters, but this is how it starts on a daily basis. I'm in here with these guys and I'll explain We've got to go feed the Big Joe herd, of course. Dunbar, Haas, we're gonna do all that, but I'm gonna talk to you about how we train our calves and why they're so, our animals are so docile. It starts right here with these guys. The reasons why we get in the pens with the calves is this is one way that we get them to calm down. One way to get them used to us. This is something that will benefit us in the future because when we go to work these bison again, they're going to be used to having people around them. They're going to get used to having people around them regardless because they see us quite a bit. This is kind of a soft introduction to get our calves used to people, used to me, used to Marissa, Kevin, that way, when we go to get in the pens with them, when we go to move them, push them, do whatever we're doing, load them on a trailer, they're not as wild and crazy bouncing off the pens. That's not what we want. Also, if these animals are going to be sold in the future, whether it's a private landowner or a live sale auction, these animals will be used to people and they'll be great for their new owners. We don't want our animals to be completely tame necessarily. I don't think you can ever tame a bison, but we definitely want them to be used to people and not crazy, which will endanger not only other bison, but people as well that are in there working with the animals and whatnot. So this is what we do to try to help us and uh, future owners that may purchase our bison. It's a strategy we've been using for about five years and it seems to be paying off for us. And every now and then, there's one or two that may still have the crazy in them and it never comes out, but that's okay, that's life. We handle it as we go. Filling up these waters. Getting them ready for the blast. Hey Maya, hey girl. Guys, we're getting a winter blast coming in. Starts today. I'm sure the rest of America, you guys up north, wherever you are, I know that uh, most of the country's getting blasted by this cold air. And so um, that's what we're doing. We're bundling down for that. So doing our normal chores, taking care of our beauty here and uh, filling up water tanks, getting everything ready for this cold, cold air that we're, us Okies aren't used to. So. That's what we're doing today. Also getting prepared for the next three or four days of this cold spell of uh, close to zero temperatures. Luckily we raised the American bison, tough, tough animals. 
Don't have to worry about them in the cold as much, but there are things that we got to do to take care of them and get them ready for this. All right, next thing's next. We are taking a Bella Hay to the Big Joe Herd. Roll it out for this. Storm comes in. I already feel the temperature starting to drop. Uh, getting that northwest wind. That means it's, uh, it's about to start getting cold. Really got to prepare all of our waters. About to work on our water system. Uh, automatic water system that we have. A couple other things. But, um, turn my heater down so maybe you can hear me a little better. But that's what a couple other things we got to do. We got to work on our uh, automatic water. Uh, it's got a uh, heat element that I can plug into it, which is actually really nice um, for times like this. But for the Big Joe Herd, which is where we're going now, um, we may have to start busting some pumps. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that may be in the next following couple days after this uh, winter blast hits. Hopefully we don't get any snow, but it's definitely the cold, cold temperatures. We have to worry about water and stuff and making sure all of our machines, like our skid steer, works. So Marissa and Brooks are with me. They came down to help. We got some rolling around out here. They're all waiting, so I rolled out a bell of hay right here. And uh, there's the CEO. There's Eleanor back there behind her. CEO will open this for me, AKA my beautiful wife. Helps tremendously when you have that help. What? Help. Have Marissa help. The way you just drive through because it's difficult when you're in the skid steer to uh, hop out, set this down, back up, open the door, crawl out, shut the gate, come back, get back in, latch it, scoop it, and then go set your bill. It's a lot of work uh, doing that, so they're all waiting. They're looking around like, what in the world? Where's Big Joe at? Oh, there he is. Here he comes. We're going to take this over here and roll it out. Push. We'll roll it out and then we'll come back and get it. The the uh, wrap. changing the way we do this here pretty soon and make our life a lot easier. Look at Big Joe. Alright, so we got all of them taken care of. What I started doing is I'm going to take this little bit of piece of bell left right here and I'll show you where we're headed. Big Joe, what in the world are you doing? Silly boy. Look at this guy.
gonna show you where we're gonna take this real quick. Don't can't forget the wrap. This is the area I've been dumping them here recently. Um, is in these areas like this. I've got some footage of what I've been doing the past couple of days is these areas like this that have been washed out kind of these gullies along this um, road here. This is kind of our main road that cuts through the Ponderosa. But I've been putting these in here to try to slow down some of the erosion here. And they'll get in here and they'll eat this. They'll break it up and it'll sit down here in these uh, grooved out spots where these depressions are and the soil is slowly eroding. But that hay will hopefully grab hold and, and help uh, slow some of this um, erosion down and the bison can help us with that when they trample this down and, and uh, get the hay to get in contact with the dirt, mud and uh, hopefully hold on to some of the ground so it'll help we've been doing this lately I've just been taking little pieces of it and doing that and it spreads out the hay for the bison so they won't fight over it get outside and get it I told Marissa they better get Brooks out it'll be one of the last days to get her out before this cold weather hits so Brooks is in there hanging out <laughs> she's waving at me it's getting cold all right, time to head back to the barn. Still got some work to get done. Want to talk about one of the best purchases you can ever get for your farm or ranch, and that's this automatic water. This, especially during the freezing temperatures and the cold blasts we've had in the past couple of years, this automatic water has been clutch. Today, we're going to take full advantage of it. Today, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a couple of things to keep this sucker warm and fight the freezing temperatures. One, there's a heat wrap that goes around the main line, and then two, there's a heat element that actually sits down on the fiberglass and keeps the water from freezing. It is perfect for this time of the year, and we've had it installed for about two or three years now, and because it's a dual water system, we can split it and have one pin. You can have animals on one side and animals on the other and still get the benefit of actual water not freezing which is the reason why i'm getting that the skid steer out i'm going to split this pin up because this one water for these two pins and so what we're doing is going to divide some of this main corral we're going to let our calves in here so that they can have access to the water system they can have access to the blue feeder and the hay bow holder that i rebuilt we're going to get this moved because this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle Let's see if i move this without doing some crazy stuff here Let's see if I move it it's pretty heavy there's a bell in it so oh hey Dunbar how you doing buddy what were you gonna tell me Dunbar was there So Marissa and Brooks came out and helped me and gave me good company as I moved the freestanding panels around, moved the hay bale holder around, and got this pin set up and ready for the calves. And now this is good for during this cold weather. We don't have to worry about another water source.
Lisa and Brooks helping Dad on the farm. So we got our pins set up. Thankful for my wife. So much faster. I don't have to get out of the skids there. She was undoing the chains for me. Help me get this pin set up. She was, she was latching these freestanding panels for me. We've got Dunbar up here. Got some two-year-old heifers up here with him. Um, keep him company. I'll tell you where Haas went, maybe in the next video. But uh, put the split bill, uh, the bill here. So now the calves can eat out of here. And then Dunbar and them can eat out of there and share it. The main purpose of this is the whole freezing temperature thing. I've got this awesome automatic water we've had installed for a couple years. You can see I worked on this and uh, got the heating element sitting down in there. Got a heat strip around the main water line coming in here where the float valve is. And now you've got a dual water system. You've only got four animals up here, so, and then you got six weaning calves right over there. So they have access to it, and Dunbar and them have access to it. Marissa got these latched up for me. Thank you very much, babe. And Brooks hanging out with me. Family time this morning. Ranching never stops, right? Full time gig. Now, uh, what I'm doing is getting ready to let these guys out, so now we don't have to worry about watering them. And the ice freezing. Oh, I can see the ponds freezing already down there. It's getting cold and getting cold fast. So she lashed that for me. I'll tell you what, she is getting it going. So we'll take this, throw it back. Probably needs to be latched right there, carabined. But uh, now these guys, I don't have to water them anymore. We'll keep an eye on that automatic water over there. But now these guys can run freely in and out and join Dunbar and them over there. They won't be in the same pen with them, but they'll be able to hang out with them and get out of the feeder as well. So I'll let these guys discover it on their own. So there's their ice already freezing up. This is the trough I was feeding them out of, as you could see earlier in the video. But now that we're getting ready for this cold blast, I'm gonna run them out here just so they see it. I want to make sure that their vision is good with it. Alright, so there they go. So they'll run out. They'll back freedom! That's what they'll be thinking. Now they can still come in and out here. No big deal. We make the space bigger for them. They'll be happy to hang out with some adults. It's been a minute since they have. We're always trying to latch her skates back because the wind can blow sometimes. So that's latched. And they can shut them. They can shut So they've got the automatic water. They're free to, this is where they've been um, right out here on the west side of the barn, we can look in from inside and see them weaning out here. Big Joe Hurst down there. Charlie! Charlie, you've got so much hair. You're so right now. So now the calves got access to hay right here. Share with Dunbar. Dunbar, he'll be happy he has some new friends. So in this little bunch of weaning calves, we've got three bulls and three heifers is what it looks like. These guys will be happy meeting some new friends. Oh yeah. Here comes Dunbar. Looking pretty Dunbar. These calves really happy with these calves. Russ and I are happy with the happy with how they look this year. Really pretty. So he'll have access to some hay. That gap right there on this hay bale holder is probably a little big, but they're gonna have to get 
down. They'd have to crunch down to really get out. You can see how big that calf is. He'd really have to get down to score it out. Um, but that's, Marissa asked me about that, and I said, if they do get in here with Dunbar and those heifers, it's not a big deal. Um, but also the thing is, they've got some weaning feed here. This is exactly what I've been feeding them. This is kind of a, a gravity feeder. This is a four-way blend. We just help get our calves started on uh, during the weaning process over winter. That's really it. Um, Dunbar's been eating it too because we wanted to get some weight gain back on him. He was kind of wormy and he got his uh, dewormer when we worked him. And uh, Doc even said he was a little wormy. So now these guys have feed here in our Oklahoma Pride feeder. And there should be set. And then Dunbar on the other side will get feed with the three heifers as well because this is all gravity flow. So happy, happy bison. I'm gonna run some of this out. It'll fall naturally, but I'm gonna go ahead and get a bunch out for them so they're good to go. And it's just gonna get colder, so I might as well get all this done before it gets colder. Spread that out for them. Yes, this is where uh, influencers, this is the time of year that we freeze our hands for you. Because uh, when you got gloves on, you can't press the record button. So there you go, guys. The good thing about these black poly tanks here is uh, the sun. I left it right here so the sun could beam on it. Keep it warm, and that helps a bunch of it. Obviously, we're covered here in a barn for Cora. So that north wind or any moisture, the barn covers, covers it, obviously. But the black heat about these tubs, these tanks, look at rooster fight, um, helps it a lot. All right, we're down here in pasture two. That's where our cover crop is. There's my little bait station right here, the game, game trail camera. We just fed them. So I'm gonna hop in here and do a couple of things. One, I'm gonna exchange my card out, my SD card. And I'm gonna do some baiting real quick. Oh, there's a couple of cubes. Do a little baiting real quick. Throw some cubes out here. See if something would come eat it. I'm gonna put some corn out here. That chorus built, but I gather, got it gathered up. Now, well, they think food. I need to hop in. Ooh, forgot. I'm gonna switch SD cards real quick. Let's see what we got on the camera. Next thing I'm gonna do is throw out some rye. Hopefully these guys should have done it after I fed, but I'm gonna basically chicken feed these areas where they stomp. Yep, shoo. 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 Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do is this is where some of those hogs, or hog, I don't know which one, as you could tell in my last video, if you haven't watched it, I finally got the white pig, got him taken care of, but my buddy Ethan, from the NRCS, locals NRCS, on a Saturday, he watches, happens to watch some cross timbers bison, and uh, we do a lot of work together. You've seen Ethan on the channel, him and Cole Fagan quite a bit. He said, hey, saw your video. You should, now's a good time since the soil's been rooted up by the hogs, you might as well throw out some seed. And I thought, well, that's a great idea. So thank you, Ethan on a Saturday, still working. Not even on the clock. Looking out for Marissa and I, but I'm just throwing out some rye here in these areas. I would go over there and do it, but you see somebody's in the way. Wonder who. But even in these areas here where the bison have been trampling, it's probably 
a good area to feed the chickens. Big Joe, what are you doing? You can't eat this rye. I mean, I'm sure you could, but it doesn't sound very pleasant. Why don't you spread those out for me? They, they hear the bucket, they think, cool, feed. So here I'm just, this is a lot of hoof stomping here. They really want over here where this cover crop is. And so, you know, there's some, that's why the hoof stomp, stomping is, is going on. I'm just throwing this right out. But I, I'm, once these guys move, there's a lot of the hog damage is right in there. Once these guys go, I'll spread some more out. Tomorrow I'll do it. We'll get you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, you know what that means. That gate's open, I'm headed home. Time to bundle up. I'm sure a lot of you are already doing it because it's already hit you, you guys up in the north before us. We're bundling down here. Got all the animals taken care of for now. I'm sure I'll have to come back maybe this evening or in the morning to bust ice. The ponds are already starting to freeze on that top layer. So here we go again. This is like three or four out of the five last winters it's been these uh, really cold, uh, unusual temperatures for Oklahoma. So all animals are fed, got hay. Cora's got her barn coverage, fresh water. Bison are tough, thick hair. I mean, you don't have to worry about them. Gotta get them some extra protein, so we'll be giving them uh, cubes tomorrow, and we'll come back and we'll see you then. Probably busting ice. May have to get the skids through out to bust ice for the Big Joe herd. Um, on those ponds because that's their water source. So we'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to keep on boss ranching. I want to thank my wife for her help today and Brooksy. See you guys.